Deep in America's heartland, the Dome at America Center stands tall in downtown St. Louis. Tonight, Monster Jam will cause mayhem in the Midwest as Adam Anderson leads the charge and the series after three dominant events. Riding high from an Anaheim win, can the professor celebrating 20 years in Max D get his second win of the season? Or can Camden Murphy fly high on the leaderboard to overtake Adam? This is Stadium Championship Series Red. This is round three. This is Monster Jam. St. Louis Arch, known as the gateway to the west along the Mississippi River. And today, only a few blocks away, Monster Jam welcomes over 20,000 strong to the Dome at America Center to cheer on the stars of Stadium Championship Series Red. Good evening, everyone. Welcome inside the Monster Jam studios. I'm Scott Jordan, and I'm excited to welcome back to the broadcast booth, Zombies, Bari Musauer. Now, Bari, you're going to be a very busy man this season, not only competing on Stadium Championship Series Blue, but also calling the action with me on Stadium Championship Series Red. Absolutely, Scott. It's great to be back here in the booth. Feels like home. I'm excited about the 2023 season. I can't wait to get started, man. And we're catching up with this series three events in, and we'll get to the series point standings in just a minute. But it is the 20th year anniversary of Tom Mentz and Max D. He started off slow in Oakland, but is coming off an event championship in Anaheim. Or he's in what, what he considers one of his home tracks, Indy being the other. They're both a little over two hours away from Paxton. But when it comes to St. Louis, he's got 19 competition wins here over the last 22 years, and that's a lot. This this is home for him. How does that momentum carry Tom into this round? Scott, those are numbers you just mentioned you can't ignore. So Tom has had great success in this building. Some iconic Max D moments have come right here. So I'm sure he's living up to that tonight. Through three events, Gravedigger's Adam Anderson has won two event championships and leads the series. He's got a new crew chief this season in Gio and Dino and Bari. They have come out firing on all cylinders. What have you seen from Adam so far? I think Adam's got a point to prove. You know, he came up second last year in the championship points, second only to Tom Mintz. So he's out to prove a point that he's here and he's going to be a vengeance this season. Well, speaking of Adam Anderson, we caught up with a five-time World Finals champion and series points leader in this UNOH pit report. I myself I don't have a racing win yet this season, and uh, I don't like that. Normally, I'm kind of the guy that wins the racing. Um, I've been to the finals, but I want that win. And, uh, you know, here in St. Louis, I've got a lot of wins under my belt here in racing, and I think tonight's the night. Last year here, um, I was able to get some racing wins, but also uh, freestyle. I had one of the biggest highlights of the season for all of Monster Jam, uh, you know, stopping Gravedigger at the last minute before uh, landing on some of the other competitors and parking it, but then also continuing my freestyle. Uh, I can only hope to recreate any sort of memory tonight. And Adam Anderson certainly made a lot of memories here in St. Louis. This will be his sixth appearance as we take a look at the driver lineup tonight for the Dome in America Center. A lot of big names here, Bari. Who do you have walking out with the hardware? Camden Murphy. I feel like he's got a chip on his shoulder. He's coming into his own. Once he gets in that groove, it's going to be hard to beat him in any competition. And he started off a little slow as well. I mean, second in the series points, but he's only got one competition win. So he's been consistent. He just needs that big breakthrough moment. We'll see if it happens here tonight in St. Louis. Now let's take a look at the season point standings through three events. Adam Anderson does have that lead, 92 points. Camden Murphy, 71. Bryce Kenny, 68. Cole Bernard in there at 67. And Jamie Garner at 64. Anything surprise you when you look at the season point standing so far? Uh, I'm surprised to see Tom Mintz at number seven. That's really uncharacteristic of that team, so I know Tom is really going to focus hard tonight. Tom the Duke all the way at nine. And how about Jamie Garner at fifth? He's having a phenomenal start to the 2023 season in El Toro Loco. A lot of points on the line here tonight in St. Louis. Let's take a look at the event breakdown here for round three. Three competitions racing the Great Cliff Skills Challenge 
and freestyle. 12 points are awarded for each competition win, and they go down from there based on finish. The driver with the most points at the end of the round is the overall event champion. It's time now for track talk, and these drivers go from the California mud to the dirt in the dome. Obviously, a much more stable surface here, Bari, as they come indoors for the first time this season. So with a deep, wide track like the dome has, what do you expect here for these drivers how to conquer these landmines in St. Louis? Well, this track here in St. Louis, the dirt is notorious for being tacky, so they're going to have to contend with that after coming off the muddy conditions in California. So this will be a different animal for all of them, but I know they can adapt. It's been absolute chaos so far on this series with the conditions they've had, uh, but a lot on the line here in St. Louis as we do move indoors for the first time. As we take a look at the racing bracket, we do have breaking news. Megalodon and Gravedigger both being worked on in the pit area, which questions their availability for round one. We see Megalodon match up with Maxi. Gravedigger versus Jester. A lot on the line here, Bari, if they cannot make it out for racing. No doubt, Scott. I'm really hoping to see that Maxi Megalodon lineup together because that is like a final round in any competition. And whoever doesn't win that race is at a huge disadvantage when it comes to the championship series points overall. And Travis Mowry awaits the winner of that match in round Round two. We are set to go here for round one of racing. Up first out of Lafayette, Louisiana, Kayla Blood in Soldier Fortune. And she is up against Ogden, Utah's Mike Christensen in Vendetta. Their first meeting of the 2023 season. And here we go, Barry St. Louis at the Dome. This is incredible. Mike Christensen is debuting a brand new chassis in Vendetta. It looks good. Hopefully they get all the bugs worked out of a brand new truck. Oh, Kayla's up on Kayla the bicycle. Kayla Blood up on two wheels on that turn. She went deep and Mike Christensen, you talk about a new chassis. How about a new win here for Mike Christensen? in here he is ready to rock as he gets over through the race ramp and across the finish line and it is vendetta moving on 25.108 let's take a look at the super glue glue to the action replay one thing you have to keep in mind scott is this first run on the track determines your qualifying pass for the next round of monster jam so that's really going to hurt kayla not only tonight but also moving forward and around two, the first round buys do get uh, the lane choice already. So as just week, next round already in play. Here comes Colvin Arden, a Black Pearl with a racing win on the season up against Nick Pag, the Arulo in Kraken. I love the new look of Kraken. Nick redid the truck in the off season. It looks beautiful. Hopefully he can manage this race really well against Colt. Nick's got one win already on the season against Cole. Colvin Arden out of the chalk line first. And we get into the turn. Nice tight drift there for Colvinard in the Black Pearl. And a great way to get this race going. Look at the smoke coming out of Kraken, though. Oh, no, that's never good. You know, he's probably going to head back to the cold pits and see if they can figure out what exactly is going on with Kraken. So Colvinard Black Pearl will advance to the second round. And we'll keep you updated on Kraken throughout the rest of the event. Hopefully they can get it worked on and get ready. Matt Pagliarulo and Jester is out next. He's got an empty lane beside him. As we take a look, there is Gravedigger still being worked on. We're told it's front steer issues. So not only does this race come into play, but what about the rest of the night for Adam Anderson and Gravedigger? Man, that's going to put Adam at a huge disadvantage when you're talking about maintaining that points lead that he's got because every round counts. As you can see, Matt is kind of struggling around the inside of that track, but he's on his own by run. So he's only running this for time. Maybe he can get lane choice in the next round. We still got to feel the track out. I think that's what Matt is doing right now. Matt is not known as a racer. The guy who is known as a racer is Adam Anderson, and this could be huge, not only in the event championship race, but the series points race as Jester officially crosses the finish line and will take the win and advance to round two. Next up in round one, the 14-time World Finals champion, Tom Minson, Max D. He's got an open lane in front of him as Todd LaDuke, Megalodon, not going to make it out. The truck getting worked on. That does not bode well for Todd's event championship chances. Not at all. I, if I know Todd LaDuke, I know he is not a happy camper right now. This is going to give the professor an easy run into the next round. Maxi now around the berm, and he's going to brake check there. He breaks up. I think what happened here, the last two events they had oh. in Anaheim, Barry, the track was muddy, and they cut out the second part of that berm. So here tonight in, in the open dome, they have to go a full lap around, and I think that messed up Tom Mintz. Wow, man. And, and not only do we have to be... And look, he's still kind of in the mental woes right now because not only do we have to be physical athletes to drive these trucks, but you got to have the mental capacity to know exactly where you're at at all times. And Tom, I don't know if he's necessarily with the track just now. So that's going to play out later tonight. You don't see Tom Mintz have a lot of mental mishaps there in that matchup. 
As we now take a look at our bracket going into round two, Oturo Loco versus Vendetta, Velociraptor versus Max D, Bakugan Dragonoid against Black Pearl, and Great Clips Mohawk Warrior versus Jester. Stay with us coming up next on Monster Jam, round two of racing as Camden Murphy hits the track for the first time on Monster Jam. Welcome back to the Dome for round two of racing. Our first matchup is Jamie Garner and El Toro Loco up against Mike Christensen in Vendetta. Jamie on the season so far, Barry, six and two. This is his best stadium racing start of his career. I'm just looking at the stance of his truck. It looks a lot wider because it is wider than a lot of the Monster Jam trucks on the circuit, and it really pays off in racing. So maybe that attributes to his success so far. El Toro Loco out of the berm first, gets around the turn, onto the gray race lane, up on the ramp. And by about a half a truck length, it's El Toro Loco now chasing it to the finish. What a great last turn by Jamie Garner in El Toro Loco. It looked like he crossed that finish line with confidence. Jamie Garner with a big win as we take a look now at the super glue, glued to the action replay. As you can see, Mike Christensen is inside that chalk line, not really the best apex for that turn. Jamie Garner is on rails across the finish line for that win. So another big win for Jamie. He moves to seven and two on the season and will advance to the semifinal round. Next up in racing, Tom Mance, Max D advancing from round one. He goes up against Newport News, Virginia's own Travis Mowry in Velociraptor. They met once this season. Travis took the win, but Travis with a lot to prove here in his second year with Team Throttle Monster. Let's see if Tom can get the mental woes out of his head and actually complete the entire course without a hiccup. He's out of the berm all right this time. Wide turn, here we go, Travis Mowry does go wide. Tom Mintz slowing it down though. Travis now with the advantage in Velociraptor. Tom, the back two wheels clip up, and this could be a big time win for Travis Mowry, and Velociraptor gets it done. What a great win, 23.865, and Velociraptor moves on. Take a look at the super glue, glue to the action replay. What a great run by Travis. I mean, he kept his cool the entire race. He did not let the fact that he was racing the professor get into his head as you look at that great look in Velociraptor. Next up here in round two of racing, it's gonna be Cole Bernard in the Black Pearl up against Camden Murphy in Bakugan Dragonoid. Cole Bernard started the win, Bari, with a big racing win in Oakland, looking for number two, Camden Murphy, still trying to get on the board here when it comes to racing wins. And here we go, off we go, that first half of the berm, it is tough to get it going, and he clips. Cole Bernard just clipped that pod right there. But he actually came out of the berm with the lead, so let's see if he can maintain that lead through this first jump. Oh, it's close, Scott, I don't know. Wide Last turn, we go again. Camden Murphy just barely misses that berm, and Camden Murphy catching up here, and he's got the win. What a come from behind win for Bakugan Dragonoid, 23.930, as we take a look at the replay. The last turn by Camden Murphy was great. Cole Bernard kind of struggled around that last turn, which gave Camden a huge lead going into that final jump. Camden Murphy improves now to two and three on the season. He moves on to the semifinals where he will meet the winner of our final round two matchup. And it's going to be Matt Pagliarulo and Jester against Bryce Kenny, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior, and Bryce off to a great racing start as well, five and two on the 2023 season. It's amazing to see the evolution, I call it, of Bryce Kenny and the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. I mean, he's really come into his own when it comes to racing. And later on in the skills challenge, you'll see he's even good at that too. He's got a big lead out of the berm and onto the outside oval part of the track. The gray race lane for Bryce Kenny goes far off to the right. That's going to get him a great angle on this turn. Yeah, it looks he's, like he's got a commanding lead. He's going to take the Mohawk Warrior across the finish line for the win. Bryce Kenny gets the win, 24.269. And now we take a look at our semifinal bracket. It's El Toro Loco against Velociraptor and Bakugan Dragonoid versus Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. The first two rounds of racing are in the books. When we come back, we'll see which of our final four has what it takes to become a racing event champion. Welcome back to St. Louis. We have reached the semifinal round of racing. And up first, it's El Toro Loco versus Velociraptor. So we get Jamie Garner against Travis Mowry, two of the best racers so far this year. This is going to be a tough one. This is going to be a good matchup. Travis Maui really impressed me on that last race against Tom Mintz. Let's see what Jamie Garner's got for him. They met one so far. Jamie did take the win. And here we go. The semifinals have begun. What an angle for El Toro Loco on top of that berm. But it's going to cost him here in the second half. And Velociraptor has a lead. 
Those berms play out very interesting. You have to hit them just right. Otherwise, they'll actually rock the truck up on two wheels. Jamie Garner has caught up. This is going to come down to the finish. Travis Mowry going to hit the corner first. Wide goes El Toro Loco. And it is Travis Mowry picking up another win here. 24.595. A great run for Velociraptor. Take a look at the replay. You can see the confidence that's building in Travis Mowry and that Velociraptor truck. He's taking each turn precisely. Jamie Garner went wide on that last turn, which is never a good sign. And look at that commanding lead that Travis got. Travis is going to make his third finals appearance so far, 2023. Next up, Bryce Kenny, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior against Camden Murphy and Bakugan Dragonoid. You talked earlier about this new Bryce Kenny, the rise of Bryce Kenny. We've been saying for years that could this be the year that he puts it all together and gets a series championship? It could be, but as you can see right there, he rocked up on those two wheels. So it's going to kind of unsettle the truck. Camden Murphy looks like he's on rail so far. And Bryce Kenny again on two wheels, trying to get up over the race ramp. Camden Murphy has an absolute lane here, did not set up off the throttle, and he is going to win by a lot. Camden Murphy advances to the final round, 23.601. Take a look at the replay. As I said at the top of this broadcast, Scott, Camden Murphy, once he gets in that groove, he is unstoppable. It's so hard to beat him. You almost have to be perfect, and sometimes even your perfect isn't good enough to beat Camden. Let's take a look at our final racing bracket here in St. Louis. Travis Mowry and Velociraptor up against Camden Murphy in Bakugan Dragonoid. One will get the first 12 points of the night and take the driver's seat in the event championship chase. So a deep stage right now. Up top of your screen is Camden Murphy in Bakugan Dragonoid. Travis Mowry pulling up slow, maybe trying to psych out Camden a little bit. It's the first meeting of the season between these two, but only one can take the racing win. Both of these guys have looked great tonight on the track. I haven't seen a mistake from either one of them, so this should be a great race to the finish. It is Camden Murphy halfway through the berm. Let's see who gets out first. It is Camden Murphy. So he started, it took the whole shot, crossed the chalk line, out of the berm and into the corner. Look at the turn. Perfect execution from Camden Murphy. I see Camden's approach is a little different from everybody else's. He leads with the rear steer a lot, and that gets him around those corners lightning fast. And Camden Murphy going to get the win. That is his first racing win of the season. Take a look at the super glue, glue to the action replay. I mentioned that neither one of these guys had made a mistake all night long. Just a little bobble there on that turn box from Travis Mowry and Velociraptor. As you can see, Camden Murphy is hard on the rear steer, counter steering with the front all the way to the finish line. So Camden Murphy going to get 12 points if we take a look at the BKT overall point standings. Now what I want to point out is Adam Anderson getting zero points. Camden came in 21 points behind him. He just made up 12. That is huge. That is huge. And another one to look at, Todd LaDuke also did not get a point in racing. Next up in St. Louis was the Great Clip Skills Challenge. In this competition, drivers could attempt a mover on two wheels or a donut. They were judged by fans in attendance on creativity, skill, and execution. Let's take a look back at our top competitors. In fifth place was Bryce Kenny Great Clips Mohawk Warrior with a nice stoppy off the pod. This takes so much poise to be able to control your Monster Jam truck and slow your breathing down to slow down the throttle response. And he did a great job at this. Just kept a nice control, get a moonwalk back to the other side of the pod. So a great combination move for Bryce Kenny that's going to put him in fifth place in the Great Clip Skills Challenge. In fourth place, Kayla Blood Soldier fortune a huge popper. That's amazing. I know Kayla has worked at this move all season long last year, and it looks like she's finally coming into her own with it. In third place, Jamie Garner and El Toro Loco. Great little flare here at the end as he bounces on the nose and then back to the back tire. That was awesome. Second place, Todd Duke makes it back out to swim in this St. Louis dirt. Nice bicycle. Great combination, too, man. That's a what, great way to redeem himself. And check out the winning run here from the professor, Tom Mentz and Max D. Oh, the maximum moonwalk. How can you deny this move? Anytime the fans see this right off the bat, Scott, they're amazed. Tom is the best at this move. He created it. Gets great control here. Gets the moonwalk right back up. And he's got another move left here. As you see, the score 8.962 comes right off the step up. That FMX ramp onto the pod gets it right in there with a nice stoppy into a nose wheelie. Now take a look at the BKT overall point standings after two competitions. Tom Mentz gets 12 with his win. Camden Murphy hanging on to the lead, but he is tied to Jamie Garter at 19. Bryce Kenny and Tom Mentz both one off the lead, and Travis Mowry sitting in fifth. 
battle for the event championship continues with one competition left. Ari and I will get you ready for freestyle when we come back with more Monster Jam. Welcome back to the Dome at America Center in St. Louis as we continue on with round three. And welcome back to the Monster Jam Studios. I'm Scott Jordan alongside Barry Musauer. And earlier this season, coming into round three, it appeared that Gravedigger's Adam Anderson could possibly run away with this series, but the Gremlins have caught up with him as they did last season. This time his front steer issues and Gravedigger with just six points. Barry, when, when you're the series points leader and you get just six points, how do you respond to that? You really just have to forget about it, Scott. You know, one thing is is he's got working for him tonight is the fans haven't seen Gravedigger all night, really. So they are on his side. They want to see Gravedigger shine, and Gravedigger is no place other than he shines better, and that's freestyle. Well, it's very crowded at the top of the BKT overall point standing. Six drivers are all within six points of one another. That means that the round three event championship will be determined by freestyle. Camden Murphy has stepped up in a big way with that racing win. Fari, if this is Camden's night to shine, what does he have to do? He's got to stay consistent. He's got to have a full freestyle run. He's got to have that wow factor. Of course, the backflip. And then just huge momentum, huge air. And hopefully he can come out on top and stay consistent because that's the name of the game. And he's got 19 points. And a driver that he's tied with 19 points at the top of that leaderboard is El Toro Loco's Jamie Gardner. There were a lot of questions coming into this season about how Jamie would respond going into El Toro Loco. And I think he is having possibly the best start to any season in his career. Yeah, it's a great move for Jamie Gardner. As you can see, consistency is paying off. He hasn't won an event all night long, but he's still right there in the thick of it. So we'll We'll see. I know he's probably going to go for it in freestyle as well to get that overall event championship. It'll be exciting to watch. Now, earlier tonight in racing, we saw Nick Pagliarulo blow a motor in crack, and he would not return in the skills competition. And right now, let's get an update from Nick on the status of Kraken for freestyle in this UNOH pit report. We saw you come around that second corner, and we saw a lot of smoke. Talk to us about what happened. You know, coming in racing Cole Vernard and Black Pearl, you know, we felt like we were having a really fast run. And coming out of that, that first jump into the second turn, I heard the motor popping and, and breaking up, and I, and I could feel the motor had let go. Unfortunately, it did blow up. And we're, me and my team, right now, we're thrashing to get it back out, but I don't think we're going to be able to make it tonight. Let's take another look at the BKT overall point standings after two. Camden and Jamie tied with 19. Bryce Kenny in there, Tom Mintz in there. What about Travis Mowry? Three points off the lead. This kid is ready to shine. I said it last year in the arenas, but he's doing it in stadiums too. He is ready, and he's proven a point that he belongs here. You know, he's got a good piece behind him in that Velociraptor Monster Jam truck. I'm excited to see him going freestyle as well. Well, freestyle order always comes into play when it comes to fan scoring. When you look at the top four, which is Bakugan, El Toro Loco, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior, and Max D, Jamie Garner gets to come out early in El Toro Loco board. Does that give him an advantage over the other drivers? It does. You know, it, maybe he'd be the first one to tackle the backflip ramp, and that always gets you a huge score. So he can use that to his advantage tonight, Scott. Well, after a freestyle win in Anaheim, Tom will go at the end of the order. So if you're Tom Mensbury, you're watching everybody else go by before you, what, what are you plotting or are you plotting anything while you're sitting in that truck waiting to go to try to win the event championship? There's a little mind game going on in your head. You have to really up every competitor that's gone before you. So you're looking to see what ramps throw the truck which way. So of course, Tom Mitz has been in his position time and time again. He's up for the challenge. If you were in that top five or top six, where would you go in this order? From one to 12, where would you go? Uh, I like the sweet spot right in the middle, right where Velociraptor's sitting at the number six spot. That's kind of where I would like to be. That's why you're a Guinness World Record holder. Two time Guinness World Record holder. We are getting ready to start freestyle. And up first in freestyle here in round three out of Ogden, Utah, it's Mike Christensen in Vendetta. So Team Throttle Monster Bar in a big spot with a chance to open up this competition in a huge way. Yeah, and this is a brand new truck for Mike Christensen. So the Vendetta is looking great. He's got a tall order though, Scott, because he's opening up freestyle. He's setting the bar for all the other competitors. They get to watch him go and see how his truck responds to all these awesome Monster Jam jumps out here. So to explain the freestyle criteria, each driver gets two minutes for their freestyle run. They need to fill the first 30 seconds of the clock to be eligible for a score. Fans in attendance here in St. Louis once again scoring these runs. Always every year a lot of, of hub hullabaloo about <laughs> fan scoring, whether it's fair, whether it's not. But the point is, those are the rules, and the fans usually get it right. Absolutely. You have to connect with the fans. That might not mean on the track at that instance. 
that might mean at the pit party, you're making a difference all night long. So that really matters. So you really have to make sure you're on top of your A game when it comes to making it through those first 30 seconds and then transforming that energy into amazing crescendo, as I like to call it, to finish out freestyle on a high note. You're only saying that because they gave you nine freestyle wins last season. That's why you're saying <laughs> that. If it was one, maybe a different conversation there. But Mike Christensen doing some good things here so far. A consistent start to his run. He gets right up over the far side of that berm. Now in the center of the lane on the inside, goes up over the jammer and right by on the deep side of the track. Now we got a great look here at the backflip ramp. He's going to avoid it this time, but just a few seconds left in his run. It looks like this truck is working really good. The slap wheelie, one of my favorite go-to moves, he executed perfectly there. Midway through his run, he's only got 20 seconds left. It's really time to turn it up for the fans. Big air there for Vendetta, representing Team Throttle Monster, a team that he and his brother Paul Jensen own. And he is going for the backflip ramp. Vendetta lines this up. We're going to see it early tonight. And he's got one, some big air, and a bounce. Wow. But holy moly, wow. he just tore the rear wheels nearly off the truck. Take a look at the super glue glue to the action replay. Beautiful brand new red chassis that he's campaigning this year. Here's the backflip. Let's see what happens on the landing. Get some nice air, gets it right up, just too hard. Ooh, man, that looks like he might have broken the rear housing there. A lot of damage there. Well, next up in freestyle is Jamie Garner in El Toro Loco out of Fortville, Indiana. So not too far from home for him. I know we talked a little bit about in racing and, and, and during the event about Jamie's start to this year. So he comes in from Overboard. He owns Team Overboard Motorsports. He's been with Overboard his entire career. And now he's in El Toro Loco. You have a bigger fan base, which I know is exciting to him. I feel like he is finally able in this truck with this identity to let it all hang out. And he is doing just that. I love watching Jamie Garner go. He never holds back. The truck usually always stays under him. And he's not afraid to put push that truck to the absolute limit. So let's see this season if he can maintain that attitude all year long with the El Toro Loco identity. Listen to the power, Scott. This truck sounds like it's got a lot of horsepower. I love the exhaust on it. It's a little different sound compared to the rest of the Monster Jam trucks on this tour. This is the overboard chassis underneath that El Toro body. So this is his truck that he has been running, that he did build. So it is that same overboard power, just with a crazy bull on top of it. And speaking of that, the clip flies off, and El Toro Loco, the mouth is gone, the nose is gone, and we get a great view of that chassis. There is overboard. We missed you, pal. <laughs> Anytime you can shed body panels off during the freestyle run, that just adds an extra element that the fans love. You can almost hear them reeling when it's something like that happens. Better visibility for Jamie, too, at this point. Big time, Aerie gets a little whip action, clears the pod. Now, freestyle's been the one competition he has not been able to put together. He sits in the bottom four in overall average on this series. There he goes, transfer jump from the side of the berm to the pod, back down, making a jammer. I don't know how much longer that El Toro Loco cab is going to hold on. Oh, as he tags the ball protection, but he's all right. Let's see if he can continue on. That disrupts your momentum just a little bit. Oh, man. Aaron it out Whoa. for El Toro Loco back on the transfer on the pod. He is trying to shed the body and he does it. Scott, listen to the crowd. And the he bumps his teeth back. That's like, come on, Cole. Let's see what you got coming up later on. 8.731 for Jamie Gardner in freestyle. Great run for him. But coming up, more freestyle is on the way. More high flying monster jam action is next. Welcome back to the Dome in America Center for round three on Stadium Championship Series Red. As we continue with freestyle out of Newport News, Virginia, here comes Travis Mallory in Velociraptor. Man, the heavy hitters just keep coming. I watched Travis Mallory last season kind of make a name for himself during one of the events uh, later in the year, and he really put Velociraptor through the paces. And it just goes to show that he's ready, he's here, he means well, and I can't wait to see what the fans think of his freestyle run tonight. Well, he's been a part of Zombie Nation in the past. In 2018, he competed in a stadium series in Zombie, and he's kind of bounced around with these independent teams. He was with Tim Menti for a while, uh, with Darren Miguez for a while, but I feel like he has really found a home and his groove with Team Throttle Monster. For sure. I mean, Team Throttle Monster builds, they build some of the best Monster Jam trucks in the country. Top-notch equipment, 
top-notch parts, a lot of horsepower from their engine builder. And as you can see, Travis Maurer is not afraid to use that horsepower. Travis comes into this competition five points off the event championship. Chase Jamie Garner at the top of the leaderboard with Camden Murphy at 19. We saw what Jamie can do. So for Travis to win the event championship, he's going to need a lot of help here. And he's, with all intents and purposes, going to have to win the competition and hope the dominoes might fall where they may. Looks like Travis was setting up. Yeah, I thought he was setting up for that that slap wheelie to little bicycle or moonwalk, I should say. But he didn't quite have the timing down. So that might be something he'll revisit later on in another freestyle. For now, it's big air. 8.731 8 is El Toro Loco. So if Travis Whoa. does not beat that, and he may do it here if he can save it. Oh, he's not going to do a tough break. Thought he had to take a look at the super glue. Blue to the action replay. It looked like he just got caught up there by that last little piece of that ramp, and it caught that back tire, as you can see, and it just tossed that truck over. Man, what a tough break. I hate when that happens. You have so much more planned in your mind, and you don't get to ex execute it. As Todd Leduc and Megalodon comes back, we mentioned earlier tonight that Todd missed racing due to mechanical issues in Megalodon. He did compete in skills with a top five finish and now a chance to make up some points that he so badly needs to start this 2023 season. This is where the mental toughness comes into play, Scott, because you have to kind of put that all behind you. You have to really drive the truck for the fans at this point because they love Megalodon. I mean, they love Todd Leduc, so they're here for him and hopefully he can make them forget about all of that that happened earlier with an awesome freestyle run. And some nice momentum here. Comes right off the race ramp, passes the chalk line. Todd, Todd's had an interesting couple of years. You know, he was in, in, in Metal Militia where he won two World Finals championships, then went to Monster Energy to Mutant, back to Monster, then into Blue Thunder last year, now into Megalodon. So it's been a revolving door for Todd the Duke. Up until this year, though, Barry, he's still been able to perform on the track. This is the slowest start I have ever seen for Todd the Duke in a season. You know, one thing that will be on Todd's side is this season is long. It's a grueling season. They have a lot of stops all over the country. So let's just hope that they can get in a groove and do the Megalodon fans proud and see if he can really come into his own later on this season. And we've heard from Corey Rummel, who drives a Megalodon as well, that the visibility is a little different. How do you think that's affecting Todd? It might affect him from the very beginning, but I think as time goes on, as I see he's lining up for this backflip, let's see if he can get the throttle rhythm down pat. Megalodon comes in, perfect backflip, but again, we saw the same thing happen. The wheels going inward, maybe some tie rod breakage there, but Todd Leduc does land the backflip, but that's going to be it for him. Yeah, a little over rotation on that backflip caused that tie rod to break, and that's going to end his run early. You really have to have that wow factor after the backflip, I think, to really get yourself into that nine range when it comes to the score with the fans. 8.861 is the score for Todd Leduc. We've had some amazing action here at the Dome, but there's also some wow moments going on around the league right now. We're going to head to the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Colt Stevens in Thunder Roars with his skills action. Scott, I had a front row seat for this, and let me tell you, the fans in San Antonio were loud when this happened. It was kind of like he breathed new life into the fans' reaction to get that almost save right there and have the combination that wasn't planned. You can't write that. I mean, you cannot plan for that at all. Gold Stevens at his home state of Texas with this round's action of the week. Coming up, Camden Murphy will try to win his first event championship of the season. Bakugan Dragonoid hits the track when Monster Jam returns. Welcome back to Stadium Championship Series Red. It's round three in St. Louis. Before we continue with freestyle, let's take another look at the BKT overall point standings. Jamie Garner came out and did a lot of great things in freestyle, which kind of turns up the, the ability here for Camden Murphy to either do something great or fail spectacularly. Yes, but you can't count out those top runners as well. I mean, Bryce Kenny was right there, so Camden has got a little pressure here. The former Monster Jam Rookie of the Year out of Atasca, Illinois. As his work cut out for him here, trying to get that elusive event championship and the series points also a factor as he closed the gap on Adam Anderson in racing when Gravedigger could not compete. So an event championship here and more points here could not only affect what happens tonight, Barry, but what happens for the rest of the season. 
Camden's off to a great start. He's a master at making that first 30 seconds go by, and you don't even realize 30 seconds have gone by because there's so much action. So he's off to a great start. Let's see if the truck can hold together for him, and he can complete this overall event championship. It's not going to come easy, though. He's really going to have to put Baku Gon Dragonoid through the paces if he wants that great score from the fans. Trying to get some rhythm going here, going all through the track. Got a nice wide dirt. We talk about that wide track here in St. Louis. And the end over end jump now on the step up. Hits the downside, up over the pod, and across the berm. So Camden zigzagging this track for him, making use of every single landmine in front of him. That last pass was like a rhythm section. He's in a great rhythm, great air there, great brake tap to level the truck out in midair and make sure he's got all four BKT tires under him and putting the power down with that Dragonoid truck. Since he debuted in 2017, he's won a Rookie of the Year, a Rising Star Award, the Outreach Award. He has gone to four Monster Jam World Finals, and there's always that talk of Camden Murphy being right there, but he seems to always come up short as the bridesmaid and never the bride. I like to say Camden has the talent to really beat anybody on the track at any given moment, but if you can get in Camden's head, that's the one space that you can have a chance at beating him at. And, you know, there's only a few people out here on the Monster Jam circuit that are good at that. Let's see what he's got for this backflip. Lines up for the backflip. Got a great angle on the trench box. Flips it up, and he's not going to wow. break a tie rod. He gets a moonwalk on one wheel. Camden Murphy throwing it down, placing his claim for the event championship. Wow. That was perfect placement. Is it? As you can see, he's throwing caution to the wind. Anything can happen at this moment. That's how you create those wow factors. And listen to the crowd, Scott. They save a wow moment and a phenomenal run. That is an award-winning run right there for Camden Murphy. Take a look at the Super glued to the action replay. He left just a few seconds on the clock, but that was the moment. He had the fans in the palm of his hand, so it didn't even matter if he had six or seven seconds left. He filled the clock to the best of his ability with some of the best action tonight, and look at that score, Scott. Not everyone was able to shine here at the Dome. and freestyle, let's take a look at some of our lower performing scores. Nick Pagliarulo blew a motor in crack, and he was not even able to get out on the track to compete. Kayla Blood, Soldier Fortune, didn't fill the first 30 seconds of her run. She would not get a score. Matt Pagliarulo took Chester for a leisurely spin around the stadium, but a low score kept him out of the top half of the leaderboard. Colvinar, Black Pearl, rolled with just under a minute left. And Bryce Kenny, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior, rolled with over 30 seconds left and lost hope of his event championship. Now let's take a look at our current freestyle leaderboard here through 10 trucks, two left to run. Camden Murphy just saw that 9.676. He's in first, Todd the Duke in second, Jamie Garner in third, Mike Christensen in fourth, and Travis Mowry in fifth. Two more trucks left to go as we look to crown our overall event championship. Coming up, the biggest rivalry in motorsports closes out the competition. It's Grave Digger and Max D next on Monster Jam. Only two trucks remain, and up next, it's the series points leader, Adam Anderson in Grave Digger. I right, tell you, Scott, that Adam's probably got a chip on his shoulder tonight. He's going to drive Gravedigger with a little bit more aggression, I feel like. And, and that's a treat for the fans. Anytime you get an angry Adam Anderson behind the wheel and he doesn't care what happens to the truck, he only cares about the fans going home saying, did you see Gravedigger tonight? And so I'm looking for that kind of energy, that kind of performance tonight from Adam. And I'm trying to make up for missing racing. Again, these points so crucial when it comes to the automatic birth to world finals. This is his fifth appearance in St. Louis. He won the overall last year, two racing wins and one freestyle win. But that is a big daunting score to beat. A 9.676 from Bakugan Dragonoid. And letting it all hang out here, Bari. There's a great jump for Grave Digger. Whoa, whoa, look out. Huge popper. And he's going to go right into the container. And that is going to do it. Take a look at the replay. Wow, I might have spoke too soon when, he, when I talked about an angry Adam Anderson. He might have got a little ahead of himself, got tripped up right there. He just ran out of real estate. I feel like maybe if he had another 20, 30 feet, he might have been able to save that. Tough break for Adam Anderson, though. Our final competitor is the 14-time World Finals champion, Tom Mentz in Max D. And coming into freestyle, Tom trailed Camden by one point. And with Camden in first, Tom needs to win freestyle to tie. And freestyle score does break the tie, and Tom would win the event championship. So right now, at this point, it's either Tom or Camden. There's a lot at stake with this one freestyle run. Tom Mitz has been here so many times. He's up to the challenge. I mean, we're talking about the professor here. And as I look at this brand new Max D 
20th anniversary. It's got a lot of pressure, though. I mean, the 20th anniversary. Uh-oh. Look out there, Bryce. You're going to tell him to look out, yet you jumped over a grave digger truck? I don't want to hear that. Move out of the way, Bryce. Let him run <laughs> over you. <laughs> you talk about appearances, nearly 20 appearances here in this building in St. Louis. A lot of success here, a lot of history here. But 20 years in Max D is unbelievable. What were you doing 20 years ago? Man, I was just hoping for my slot inside of a Monster Jam truck. And I'm 12 years in this season, so I'm living a childhood dream. And it's just definitely a thanks when it comes to Tom Mintz. He's definitely coached me along the way. And I, I have a great time living a dream, hoping to spread that that message across the world wherever I go. Tom with one freestyle win on the season in Anaheim. The score to beat 9.676. A 9.677 wins Tom Mentz the event championship here. And he is going deep on this track at the dome. This could be a backflip. He is lined up for it. Off the trench box goes Max D. Beautiful backflip, sticks the landing. And we got some more time on the clock. But uh -oh. is he not going to be able to get this thing going again? This could cost him. Oh, he's going. Let's see what he's got. He's going to have to turn it up now, Scott. I mean, the wow factor after the backflip is huge when it comes to closing out for these fans to give you a great score. Lost a little bit of momentum on that jump. We saw him just glaze over Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. Truck leaning a little bit to the left there. There's a nice whip, a hard side slap. Wow, that was a great landing, though. That's one of these great moments of this truck. And look, he's got that moonwalk from a rebound. That's one of the things that Max D is known for now. He's got so little weight in the back of that Monster Jam truck because the engine is in the front and he can have that rebound just from a normal jump into a moonwalk. Great move. Lands it like a feather, has time for more. Another great jump. We're seeing a lot of big air here from Tom Mintz. And that will do it. Fans going nuts, but is it enough to take the win? Tom Mentz eating up the crowd here at St. Louis. Take a look at the super glue, glue to the action replay. That is the biggest backflip of the night. He stuck the landing perfectly. Just came up a little short on that freestyle score, though. 9.401, not going to get the win. That's going to go to Camden Murphy. That's also going to give him the overall event championship. So 12 points for Camden Murphy added to his score. But first, we take a look at our freestyle top five. Bakugan in first, Max D in second, Megalodon third, El Toro Loco fourth, and Vendetta in fifth place, rounding out our freestyle top five. Now we take a look at our final BKT overall point standings. Camden Murphy gets the win with 31, Tom Mentz in second, Jamie Garner in third, Bryce Kenny in fourth, and Travis Mowry. Great night for him, rounding out the top five. Right now, let's join our overall event champion, Camden Murphy. Man, it was a definitely a tough night for us, man. The, the engine is definitely on the last legs right now, so we didn't know what we were going to have for, for racing, but we luckily took home the racing win there. Skills, we had to nurse the engine, so we weren't really too sure if we were going to make it even through skills. Got to freestyle, and, and the tight points were super, super tight, super close, so I had to go out there, go big as, as possible, and, and try to really take home the freestyle win. That was the only way I was going to take home the overall, and here we are. Man, the track was tough tonight, too. We were battling some ruts out there, battling the super tackiness, and, and really just hoping that you, you didn't end up on two wheels. And I was on three, I know, most of the time, but we took it home. Tonight's overall got us that much closer to Adam Anderson, where I'm only a handful of points away from him now. And man, this is only the fourth event this year. We have so many more weekends to go, so hopefully we can add on to it tomorrow night and also maybe pull away from everybody else, too, man. So I don't know, my man Craig is on, on it with Bakugan right now. Hopefully we can take it home tomorrow, too, and it's that much closer and maybe pass Adam Anderson. Camden Murphy, a big win tonight. This could be a good jumping off point for him in the series points chase. But speaking of jumping off points, we know that, that each round, you know, you, you try to build some momentum. A guy who really did that tonight was Tyler Duke. He missed racing, but still two competitions, 21 points. That's a great night. Can Tyler Duke jump here and use this as a great way to build momentum? Absolutely. Anytime you can have a good night and really wow the fans, anything can happen as long as these guys are laser focused and their truck stays under them. It's going to be fun to watch. Round three did not disappoint. If you want to see if Camden Murphy can take over the series points lead, make sure you join us for round four when we go back to the Dome at America Center. That's all the time we have for Morning Blue Sour. I'm Scott Jordan, and we'll see you next time on Monster Jam.